In this video, I'll show you how to operate the fuel cell using activity number three. Start by connecting the alligator clips of the power supply to the electrolyzer. Connect red to red and black to black. Then go ahead and plug in the power supply into an electrical outlet. Make sure that the power strip or any source of power is far enough away from the electrolyzer in case any of the potassium hydroxide were to spill out. Run the electrolyzer with both of the valves in the open position so that you purge out any excess air that's either in the storage columns or in the gas supply tubes. This will take about one minute. After about one minute or so, go ahead and close both valves on the gas supply tubes and let the electrolyzer run until the hydrogen storage column is nearly full. When the hydrogen storage column is nearly full, go ahead and unplug the power supply and monitor the level of gases in the storage columns for about one minute. If the level of gas decreases, then there is a leak in the electrolyzer somewhere. Now, if you do find a leak somewhere, check to make sure that the black rubber stoppers are snug in the openings of the storage columns. Also make sure that there are no cracks in the fittings, the tubing, and the valves as well. If there are no leaks in the system, we can go ahead and connect the fuel cell to the electrolyzer. Start by taking the short purge valves and connecting them to the bottom ports on both sides of the fuel cell. You also want to make sure that both of these valves are in the closed position. Next, take the hydrogen gas supply tube and connect it to the top port of the fuel cell on the side that's labeled hydrogen. All these connections should be fairly snug. Next, take the oxygen gas supply tube and connect it to the side of the fuel cell labeled oxygen. Once all four tubes are connected to the fuel cell, go ahead and insert it into the white plastic tray to keep it snug. Take a multimeter or a voltmeter and connect the red probe to the red electrode on the fuel cell. And take the black probe and connect it to the black electrode on the fuel cell. Set the multimeter to measure at least one volt. Now because multimeters vary, you might need to consult the instruction manual that came with your particular multimeter. Now open both valves on the gas supply tubes. The multimeter should read zero or close to zero because the fuel cell is still full of air. In order for a fuel cell to work, we have to purge out this excess air so that we have a higher concentration of hydrogen and oxygen gases inside the fuel cell. Start by giving the purge valves on the hydrogen side a quick half turn. Check the voltages and see if there is any change. Then give the other purge valve on the oxygen side a quick half turn as well. The voltage across the terminals on the fuel cell should be at least 0.7 volts. If not, purge both valves a second time. If this still does not raise the voltage to at least 0.7 volts, you may need to rehydrate the fuel cell, which is described in the troubleshooting video. Now that there is a high enough voltage across the fuel cell, we can put the fuel cell to work. Take the electric motor and connect the red wire to the electrode on the motor with the small plus symbol next to it. Then take the black wire and connect it to the other electrode on the motor. Place the motor into the white plastic stand that came with your kit. Connect the black wire to the black electrode on the fuel cell and then connect the red wire to the red electrode and the motor should start spinning now. Whenever the gas supply tubes are connected to the fuel cell and both valves are in the open position, you want to monitor the amount of gas stored in the storage columns. As gases are consumed, the level of liquid potassium hydroxide rises up both storage columns. If it were to rise up and get into the gas supply tubes and down into the fuel cell, it will destroy the fuel cell. So, if the level of liquid potassium hydroxide rises above the zero mark, what you want to do is close both gas supply valves, 
disconnect the electric motor from the fuel cell, reattach the power supply to the electrolyzer, plug in the power supply, and generate more hydrogen and oxygen gases so that you can continue the activity. If the electric motor starts to slow down, or the voltage across the fuel cell begins to decrease, you may need to give both purge valves a quick half turn. You may need to do this several times while running the fuel cell. Measuring the current produced by the fuel cell is different than measuring the voltage across the fuel cell. To measure current, disconnect the red alligator clip from the fuel cell and connect it to the black probe on your multimeter. Then connect the red probe on your multimeter to the red terminal on the fuel cell. You're now measuring current. Here's an illustration showing how the multimeter should be connected to the circuit. You'll have to change the settings on your multimeter to measure current. Since multimeters vary, you may need to consult the instruction manual that came with your multimeter. For more information about the curriculum, please visit CPUP's website or LabAIDS, our publisher, at the following addresses.